Hi guys, Summers here and welcome along to my latest video where I'll take a look at the Haas VF20. But before we get going, if you're new around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. And if you do go on to enjoy the video, don't forget to hit that like button too. Anyway, enough of that, let's take a look at the car. The VF20 is not a massive departure from its predecessor, with the team really looking to make good on a design concept that should have given them more performance last season. So, let's tackle some of the changes seen here on the VF20. First up is the front wing, which now features a triangular strike atop the footplate. A trick we've seen from others last season, as they tried to entice the trajectory and vorticity of flow leaving its trailing edge and other surrounding surfaces. That doesn't mean theirs is the same though, as the team have added a cutout in the upper rear corner. Meanwhile, it's also worth noting the placement of the strike, which sits where the contour of the foot and end plate start to sweep outwards. Talking of the end plate, take a look at this rearward view. It quite clearly shows how far off the vertical axis it is, and even more so at the rear, where they're trying to encourage flow across and around the front tyre to influence the wake that's being created. Let's move on to the nose, which has been treated to a device that I like to call the snow plough. This structure, highlighted in yellow, is similar to the design introduced by Ferrari last season, and coincided with their leap forward in performance. The plough isn't solely used to guide airflow, although that is one of its functions. It can also help to put the car a little more on the nose, meaning there's less responsibility for the wing to handle in that regard. With this in mind, we must also consider its relationship with the front wing's neutral section, just ahead and below it. Looking back in Formula 1's recent history, teams used to use a higher nose solution, due to the prevailing regulations. However, teams would often move the camera pods into this similar position, looking to influence the flow off the neutral section of the wing to create a sort of winged section. Just behind this we have the turning vanes. These are used to align the flow at a point where it might be considered to be becoming turbulent, partly due to the weight that's created by the wheels alongside. The vanes on the VF20 are a two-part arrangement, with the first being mounted to the underside of the nose and the second to the chassis. The forwardmost vanes have been brought a little further forward, with an additional vertical section now hung from the underside of the nose. Suspension-wise, Haas take most of their stuff kit and caboodle from Ferrari, and so it's of no surprise that we're seeing them take the more extreme push-rod-on upright solution favoured by the Scarlet team in the latter phases of their last campaign. This solution could have a video in its own right if I'm honest, so I'm not going to delve too deeply here. However, if you do want a deep dive, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to get one done just after this busy launch season. Suffice to say though, the push rod on upright solution should improve their transition from mid to low speed corners, if their drivers find it to their liking. The side pods are once again an evolution of the Ferrari style design introduced in 2017 and subsequently ran by Haas ever since, with what seems like an even smaller inlet buried down behind the associated bodywork. Wing mirror wise they've gone down the two parter route we've seen from others over the last few years, albeit perhaps not quite as radical. The airbox sees the team depart from the oval one used last season, and instead they've decided to use the triangular style box and hoop seen on the Ferrari last year. It's a decision that's likely driven by their work with Ferrari as a power unit supplier, which will have also undoubtedly come with some influence over the rest of the cooling and packaging decisions. The outer section of the floor has also been treated to some Ferrari S touches, with the fully enclosed holes now running almost the entire length of the floor, while several rows of the Hedgehog style straights can also be found at prime locations too. Haas were the only team to introduce these horizontal louvers on the outer bounding of the upper section of the rear wing end plate last season, and it appears they're here to stay. It will be interesting to see if anyone else has looked into these as the cars are unveiled in the coming days. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the VF20 and if you have, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content in the future.